Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to the Capablanca saga, of course we are back at the 1914 tournament of St. Petersburg and Capablanca faces again with the black pieces the strongest chess physician in the world, uh, it's Dr. Zygbert Taras and uh, the first time they faced uh, uh, off against each other was in the 1911 San Sebastian tournament, uh, Taras had the white pieces, he went for the Italian game, then the second time was in the first part of this second of the 1914 tournament in St. Petersburg where Taras went for the uh, Rui Lopez and now again uh, third time uh, Tarash has the white pieces but we already mentioned this in the previous video uh, the two of them played uh, six games all together and uh, out of the six games Tarash had um, the, the white pieces in five of those games and I don't remember I mentioned this at the beginning of the 1914 tournament uh, but some of you might, might have forgotten and some of you might not have been here from the beginning uh, Capablanca won the first part of the tournament being a, a point and a head uh, ahead of everyone else. Uh, so he keeps uh, that point advantage. So now in the second part of the tournament in the double round robin, Capablanca has a one and a half point lead ahead of everyone else. So if he just, uh, you know, doesn't uh, terribly blunder something, he pretty much has this, uh, you know, tournament in the bag. Uh, now let's check out this very nice game. They will repeat a game from the first part of the tournament to a certain point. Uh, Taras goes for e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, and bishop to b5. Again, Taras goes for the Rui Lopez, as uh, he really had an excellent game. And for those of you who don't remember, both the game from the San Sebastian tournament in 1911 and from the first part of this tournament were drawn uh, between the two of them. Uh, a6, Morphe's defense, again by Capablanca, as in the first game here, bishop a4, knight to f6, and knight to c3. Bishop to e7, everything the same as in the first game, and uh, there d3 was played, if you remember that weird uh, tempo loss uh, by Tarash, he played d3, and after d6 he advanced the pawn all the way to d4, in, instead of just immediately going d4. Uh, but here Tarash had uh, a different idea, he prepared for this game, he went castles. Uh, and okay, now Capablanca goes b5, forces the bishop back, bishop to b3, and only now d6. Uh, we have a4, as now Capablanca gave him a target, so you do want to attack that target. Uh, you know, it's it's always a, princip a principled idea to, to attack, um, uh, you know, a pawn with, with a less central pawn. Uh, and here b4, not allowing this exchange and kicking the knight back into the center. Knight to d5, and this is a pretty standard position even in today's chess that has stood the test of time for more than 100 years. Uh, there are some notable games, for example, from 2013, uh, Ponomario versus uh, Sergei Karyakin, and then also Movsesian versus Peter Svidler. Uh, but in both of those games, uh, Black continued with Knight to a5, which is uh, the engine's uh, top recommendation. Uh, but in those days, without engines, uh, Lasker went for Bishop to g4, just a nice, normal, developing human move. Uh, so we have c3, and now comes Rook to b8. Uh, and of course c3 takes away the d4 square from black's knight, you don't want to allow uh, the attacking of the pinned piece, and uh, now d4 or d3 is an idea depending on how black continues. Uh, and now we have bishop to c4, Taras goes for the uh, a6 pawn which is now undefended after Capablanca played rook to b8, uh, and Capablanca goes for knight captures on e4. And here d4 by Taras. Uh, there is one game that was played two years after this game, uh, it's uh, the game in New York, the Rice Tournament in 1916, uh, Schroeder versus Hodge, uh, where bishop captures on a6 was played, but the black was able to win this, with that game very elegantly. Uh, uh, so d4 here by Taras. Maybe bishop captures on a6 was supposed to be an improvement on Tarash's d4, but uh, it didn't go all that well. Uh, b captures on c3 by Capablanca, b captures on c3, and now castles by Capablanca, and bishop captures on a6 finally. Uh, e captures on d4, c captures on d4, and now comes uh, knight to b4, uh, attacking the bishop on a6. So bishop either has to go back or you have to capture as your knight on d5 is also attacked. Uh, we have knight captures and rook captures. So Tarashir has a pass pawn, but what does Capablanca have? Capablanca has... Um, uh, well, a, a bit of a lead in development, and also he will be at some point able to create a pass point, perhaps if c6 will be playable. Uh, c5. Uh, bishop to b5 now, uh, reducing the mobility of Capablanca's rook, and now it's interesting. Can Capablanca immediately go for c5? This does uh, instantly create a pass point for Capablanca as well, uh, but after d captures, d captures, and for example, if the queens come off the board, uh, knight e5 now comes with an attack on the bishop, and also knight to c6 will be a threat for white. So to prevent everything, bishop f6 attacks the knight and also the rook on a1 is undefended. So knight to c6 now attacking both of the rooks, 
rook to a8 and now knight captures on b4 bishop captures on a1 and we have this uh, end game where the material is pretty equal uh Tarash would have a passed a pawn Capablanca would have a passed c pawn uh they are both of the pawns are uh, equally advanced uh, but when you look at it uh Capablanca's king is much farther away from uh Tarash's pass pawn than Tarash's king is to Capablanca's pass pawn so if you you know continue trading pieces and take this into account uh white will be white will be uh, you know, uh, the one to favor here. Uh, so, after this, bishop to b5, first Capablanca goes for bishop captures on f3, not allowing this entire line, uh, which also comes with the idea that if queen captures, then uh, white loses a pawn here. And it's also an interesting, uh, interesting line where white gets a lot of... Uh, uh, attacking potential. For example, bishop b3 attacks the rook, rook b4, and now bishop to c6 attacks the knight here. Now d5 defending the knight, and now rook f to d1. And here white would uh, white would have a lot of uh, a lot of potential in the position for for his uh, pawn uh, sacrificed pawn, and also the passed a pawn is still here. And the game then continues. Uh, it will be somewhat difficult to defend the d5 pawn, uh, but there is a very nice line. Knight c3 attacks the rook, rook d3 attacks the knight, and now queen to b8. Uh, here offering a knight with some ideas of rook to b1 check. But white can accept it. Rook captures, and now bishop to f6 with an attack on both rooks. Uh, rook to f1, now defending, and now bishop captures on c3. Uh, and now bishop to c5 attacking both of black's rooks. Uh, it's a pretty crazy line. d4, bishop captures on f8, and now rook to b1. Uh, threatening to capture and bring the queen over to b1. g3, now making some room for the king. Uh, rook captures, king captures, and only now queen captures on f8, and we would have this uh, position where black keeps his extra pawn already uh, with a passed uh, c pawn and d pawn, and uh, it's a pretty equalish, uh, equalish end game. Uh, so, after bishop captures on f3, Tarash doesn't go for queen captures, but the g captures. Kicks the knight back, and also the queen now defends the d4 pawn. We have knight to g5 by Capablanca, but now uh, Tarash's uh, pawn structure is somewhat uh, compromised in front of the king, and uh, you do have to defend. Uh, rook to a3, f4 is the idea, and from there the rook will be uh, helping out with, with the defense by covering the entire third rank. Uh, bishop to f6, and now comes f4. Uh, as planned, knight to e6. Uh, as you can see, Tarash's pawn structure is a bit messed up, so uh, those pawns will be easy targets. Uh, rook to h3. Here, Tarash decides there is no point in trying to defend the position anymore. Capablanca's uh, positionally, Capablanca is just better, uh, so Tarash shifts into into attack mode. Rook to h3. With ideas of queen h5, of course, followed by some. Uh, checkmating ideas, uh, but C Capablanca says uh, queen h5 is not a problem, and he decides to grab yet another pawn. Rook captures on d4 is played, and now queen to h5, threatening checkmate on h7, h6 defending, and now comes rook to g3, uh, with the idea of, of course, queen captures on h6, the g7 pawn is now no longer will be able to capture, uh, and here uh, Capablanca played king to h8, uh, unpinning, but also possible was knight captures on f4. And now after queen captures here, just knight to g6, and it's a pretty nice position. Uh, there are no dangers here, for example, you might think, okay, maybe rook captures, pawn captures, uh, queen captures, but there's nothing here for white. Uh, bishop to c4 is not uh, uh, not a possibility, the rook covers that square, but even without it, d5 would be an idea. So it, it would just be a much better position for black, even though it might seem kind of dangerous, but there's nothing to it. So king to h8 first by Capablanca, and now comes queen to f5. Uh, f5 seems like an interesting idea with the plan bishop captures on h6, but it doesn't work. Black can simply block this with knight g5, uh, but also even better is just rook to h4, the forces the queen back, and now after the queen retreats, knight d4, uh, black um, uh, defends and, and retains a better position. So, after king h8, we have queen to f5, and now comes bishop to h4, attacking the rook and preparing queen to f6. Capablanca now wants to activate the queen, and also perhaps even trade queens. Uh, rook to h3, and now queen to f6. And here... Uh, uh, Tarash could go for captures, captures, and f5, and try to try to play this, still having uh, the outside pass pawn, but he would be down in material with somewhat compromised pawn structure on the king side. Uh, it might ha might have been playable, but still playing this against Capablanca uh, would, would pretty much equal suicide, and unless you're Lasker, Lasker would figure something out. So Tarash decides he wants the queen still on the board. He wants to continue attacking. He's not interested in in, in you know suffering a slightly worse endgame against Capablanca for a very long time. Queen g4, 
threatens to attack the bishop, but it's not a problem. The bishop is not lost. Capablanca simply goes bishop g5. Uh, of course, the pawn cannot capture, as rook captures queen would be played. Uh, so bishop to e3. Attacks Capablanca's rook, but now comes knight captures on f4. Uh, a very nice uh, idea. Bishop captures with an attack on the queen, but now knight captures with check. Uh, and now uh, king to h1. If you capture with the queen, you lose the bishop uh, on d4. So king to h1, now your uh, queen is under attack and also your knight is under attack. There is only one move that prevents both threats. Uh, queen to e6. Getting the queen out of the way and also helping out with the defense of the knight. Uh, and here, uh, if you try something like queen g3, moving the queen, then black can just push c5, queen d5, check will be a threat. Uh, so here, Lasker, uh, sorry, not Lasker, Tarash uh, uh, again avoids the, uh, the trade of queens and goes queen to f3. Uh, and now comes bishop to d2, uh, preventing counterplay, uh, also not allowing this pawn to, to start marching forward. We have queen to d3, attacking the bishop, and now bishop to a5, completely blocking off the pawn. Uh, bishop to c6 now, taking hold of this uh, very important diagonal, which black can use to deliver checks to the white king, uh, but it's only temporarily, as Capablanca now plays d5, completely blocking off the bishop now, and also threatening to capture it. Uh, rook to c1 defending, and here Capablanca really starts uh, playing amazing chess, uh, just overloading the position. Uh, he plays knight to f4. The queen is under attack, and also you you can see that the queen is guarding the bishop uh, here. So if queen makes uh, uh, an unwise retreat, for example, something like this, then queen e4 check wins the bishop on d4. Uh, so we have to be very careful. And also, you're not uh, really uh, able to move the rook, as the rook is forced to keep an eye on the bishop on c6. Uh, so queen to e3. Now Tarash wants to trade queens, uh, but uh, Capablanca is not interested in doing it right away. If you capture, then bishop captures, attacks the knight, which defends the pawn. If you move the knight, you lose the pawn. So here, uh, Tarash would still be able to play this game. But after queen to e3, uh, Capablanca finds a brilliant move that's just a, you know, a game ender. Uh, so feel free to pause the video here and find this brilliant move Capablanca played. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds as usual. Uh, so for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are an excellent ender of games. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, knight e2 is, is a possible move with an attack on the bishop and on the rook, but a much faster idea is bishop to d2. And now white just is without moves. So this is complete uh, complete overload. Uh, the rook is under attack. The queen is under attack, uh, and uh, there's not nothing to do here. If you just move the queen, uh, which uh, which Taraj did, uh, but there's not much you can do. If you just capture the queen, it seems like your troubles are, are over, but not really. Knight captures comes with an attack on the bishop and also on the rook, and you can't defend both. Uh, so you'd have to play something like bishop b2, give up the exchange, and then you're just uh, gonna lose the game. Uh, Capablanca is up a pawn and up the exchange, so this will not be playable. Uh, on the other hand, after this bishop to d2 move, uh, you could play the move uh, Tarash played, which is queen to a3. Uh, now with the idea, there's still poison to the position, you know. Uh, for example, if Capablanca now captures the rook, then queen captures on f8 check. King moves and queen captures on g7 will be checkmate. So you don't want to start celebrating too early. So after queen to a3, Capablanca simply played rook to b8, by far the strongest move, uh, taking away even the b2 square from, from the white queen, and now there's really nothing for uh, for Tarash to do. And he was in this position for the first time uh, since the two of them start facing each other that Dr. Zygbert Tarash resigned the game. Uh, and Capablanca takes the lead, you know, in, in their, well... A rivalry, so to say. Uh, why did he resign? Well, uh, now you just have to decide what to play. Uh, there's really not all that much. Uh, the rook is still under attack. You can't move the rook because the rook has to protect the bishop on c6. Uh, if you don't do anything, queen e4 check will be deadly. Uh, yes, the queen does cover the f3 square, and uh, that, uh, sorry, that's uh, I forgot to mention, that's why rook to f8 was played. Uh, queen to e4 uh, check is met with f3, then the check is blocked, and there's still the threat of queen captures on f8. So first Capablanca just eliminated that threat, that's why rook to b8, uh, and now uh, there are too many threats. Queen captures on c6 will be a threat if the rook moves, if the rook doesn't move, uh, then uh, bishop captures rook is an idea, if uh, you play anything, then queen e4 check picks up the bishop, so it, it would be impossible to prevent, uh, to prevent all these threats. So, uh, for example, just to show, if you play 
there, there's no move to play, so I can't show if you play something. If you play like Queen G3, for example, Queen E4 just wins, uh, win, wins the bishop. If you try something like Rook to C2, like guard the Rook and also maybe guard the Bishop uh, again, uh, you get Queen to E1 checkmate. This is even worse. So <laughs> that's not 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 even uh, an option. So I, I can't even show you uh, what what could, White could try to try and play because simply everything loses. You can just try some variations for yourself. Uh, but yeah. Uh, excellent game by Capablanca. Going into this uh, second part of the tournament with a point and ha ha half lead, uh, drawing the first game with uh, world champion Emmanuel Asker, now winning uh, for the first time ever against Dr. Zigbert Taras. Capablanca is just crushing this tournament, so uh, it's gonna be gonna be a great tournament. I do hope you're enjoying it and that you have enjoyed this game uh, and uh, my coverage of the entire Capablanca saga so far. Uh, I would like to thank. Um, uh, Edward Garrett, uh, Garni uh, Barkodarian, uh, Paul Staples, uh, Ismail Salim, uh, and Stefan Mann for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, uh, hopefully, with some more interesting content. Uh, thank you all, and have an excellent rest of your day.